If you're watching this video, you're about to make a whole lot of money because I am about to walk you through the top five questions that is searched all over the internet about course creation, and I'm going to answer them for you. My goal is to help coaches and entrepreneurs turn their mind into money, teaching them how to take what they know, package it, market it, sell it, and automate it to make a massive income and massive impact, even if they don't have a lot of followers on social media. Welcome back to another episode of Monetize Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Wairosia. In today's episode, we are going to answer the top five questions that are searched all over the internet on course creation. Now, these questions came from this new AI technology, chat.gpt. Now, I believe that artificial intelligence is the compilation of information that is stored, but I don't believe it's smarter than me. <laughs> they ain't built nobody, of course. Ain't no chat GPT or no AI got no the mob monetized online business blueprint. How dare they think that they can answer questions? And you probably searching it and think that the answer is better. So I want to, now it gave me the top 15, but I'm not going to go through all 15. We're going to break down the top five. And for those of you who's like, what is this? You understand that AI is taking over like DJ Khaled. One city at a time. All right. So uh, AI is taking over. And because AI is taking over, it's important that we understand how to use it. One thing you cannot miss, and I want to give a disclaimer, I, I'm not hating on AI. I like it. I think it's going to make things efficient, but lazy people will be lazy people. It's like the person who copies the person test and write their name too. So lazy people will be lazy people. You cannot be a lazy entrepreneur and think that AI is going to solve every thinking problem you have. You still got to think your business. So when you type in, uh, write sales copy for me. You're still going to have to edit that and you're going to have to understand what is the goal of the sales copy where you're trying to get conversion. So we'll get into that in, a, in another episode of like how to use AI for sales copy, for webinar scripts. And we'll talk about different types of AI that creates presentations for you so you don't have to do it yourself with webinars, spits it out on down the line. But I do want to address how to, one of the things about AI is when you type in, give me 15 social media content, well, it's supposed to set you in the right direction and cut down on your time, right? You still, there are still some thought process that's supposed to make it in your own voice. So AI is not going to, is not going to have certain things like cultural references. AI is not going to have nuance. I'll give an example. If I told you to explain what it's like if you grew up in the 90s and on a Saturday morning, what's on TV? Well, A, I could tell you what shows were in the 90s, but it can't describe Zach Morris when he said that episode when Kelly broke up with Zach for Ted and was cheating on him. Man, listen to me. How am I supposed to? Listen, don't get me into it. It's not going to be able to explain the nuance of what it was like for Thank God It's Friday on a Friday night with Stephen Q. Urkel. Now, it's not going to explain Martin and its embellishment, but it can say, give me the top 10 things relatable of the 90s. Well, you got to add in nuance and cultural examples in your personality. If you're not infusing that, then you're losing. So don't have AI create a course for you that lacks the human to human connection, the empathy. Artificial intelligence does not have empathy. So your ability to feel what your customers feel, your story. And if you get lazy, you'll forget to put you in it. And now it's like you're cheating people, right? You're the doctor writing prescriptions for patients you never saw. Take two of these and call me in the morning. Malpractice, sue them, <laughs> right? So because what we're doing in the information space with courses and coaching programs and services, because we are, we are exchanging and downloading ideas from our mind into the mind of other people, well, family, the same way that you can feed somebody's body something and make them sick, you can feed somebody's mind or their business something and literally make them sick. So I would say to you, that's my disclaimer. Make sure that you don't just let AI do work that you're supposed to do. You are still the owner of your business. Message. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to get into the top five questions. And once again, 15 of them came up. Oh, I might read the 15, but... Well, it was more than 50. Never mind. It's 22 of them. Jesus, <laughs> we ain't got time. We ain't got time. So we'll grab five of them. Let me see which one I should grab for you. Mm, we've dealt with this before. Number one uh, question that popped up on the top. Uh, most searched and asked questions about course creation. So it's the most searched and asked questions about course creation. How, did I, how do I develop a marketing strategy? 
Now, we've dealt with that in several episodes. Y'all know the, the goal of each Monetize with Marcus podcast is to focus on making money and marketing, right? Those are the two focal points of it. So I'm on a mission to teach each person how to turn their mind into money and to how to help them get better with marketing and making money, right? So that's the whole that's the whole goal of it. So how to create an effective marketing strategy. I think we ought to drop the play for this one, right? We ought to drop the play. Let's go and drop the play. What's the play on how to develop? So top five, come on, we got it over here. Top five, top five most search and ask questions about course creation. Now, number one, we're just gonna write for short marketing strategy, how to develop a marketing strategy. Now, if that's question number one, let's dig into it a little bit. Let's answer that. Let me come right here. Let's answer this. Let's answer this, okay? So if we are trying to figure out the marketing strategy, first and foremost, I want to eliminate the thought that most people have that social posting content on social media is a marketing strategy. We first got to eliminate that because when we say marketing strategy, excuse the writing, the first thing people think of is, yeah, I need to post more. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, posting on social media is posting on social media. It doesn't become marketing unless the content has a strategy, hence marketing strategy. So you take a marketing strategy, meaning I want to market to this group of people and get them to take this action. Your content now serves the mission of your marketing strategy. So one of the things I will say to you, if you to answer this question, because chat GPT ain't doing this. Ha! <laughs> to answer this question, one of the way, one of the best ways to market your course, you might not like my answer, but this is my answer. I'm gonna go right here. You might not like my answer, but here's my answer. Give away the thing you plan on selling. The absolute best marketing strategy you could ever do is package. Not just random content, your course content, course content into social media content, social med content. We're just going to put con. Package the information in your course. So if you got module one teaches, I'm going to just break down a course. And you say your course is on how to purchase, how to improve your credit score and purchase your dream home. If you're in credit repair, you can steal this. The first thing you got to deal with is the mindset of the person who believes that it is not possible. So you reinforce the learning. So now you're saying if if you've been denied before or in your mind, you believe that your credit score can't go from 500 to 700 or to 800 and you don't know how to get the capital to finally be able to purchase your dream home. Three things I want to teach you that's going to make that easy. First thing you're going to do is pull your credit report. Second thing you're going to do is look up and you go through the list of those things. Right now, when this is inside of your course, that people are going to pay you for. But why recreate content? and try to make it like your course when the best the best way to show someone you can solve their problem is actually solve it. The best way to show somebody that your food is good is letting them taste it. So create ta taste testing of the content. That's how you sell it. So now when people, every time you show up online, they're hearing you teaching, they're going to say, man, how can I get more of this? And you direct them to it. All right. That's number one. We answered that question. We can give you more, but that's good. That's the play I want you to run. Turn your course into social media content as a part of your marketing strategy. All right. Number two. I've got to pause really quick before we get back into the episode to give you access to a free gift that I have for you. Well, chances are you there's some knowledge that you know or service that you are already doing. And I tell people, if you are doing any service or have knowledge in your head, you should be able to automate that to generate revenue on the side, whether you're cutting hair. Well, while you're cutting hair, what if you could take the same knowledge and skill and automate that to show someone else what, how to do it? You generate revenue while also helping others. Well, I created a free training that literally shows you how to package your knowledge and your services into an automated online course. Well, now instead of giving someone access to your time or letting them take you out to coffee, you can give them access to your thoughts without your time. It generates money for you but it also helps other people. So you can type www.monetizewithmarcus.com and you can get access to a free video training that shows you how to do it. Let's get back to the episode. Ooh, this is good. We need to do, I'm about to tell y'all the question, but we're going to probably have to do an entire episode on this one. Y'all can tell I get excited. We're going to have to do a whole episode. How do I use 
How do I create and, and execute an email marketing campaign to sell my course? I think that's going to be a good one. I, I, you right there like, yeah, answer that. Nope. Moving right along. We're doing another episode. <laughs> Y'all don't have no sense. Okay. Okay. I will. I will. That's what you want to know. Nod your head. You at home. Not, why are you nodding your head and I can't see you? <laughs> All right. So we're going to answer question number two. How do I execute an email marketing strategy? We got to put that on the, on, on the screen too. Like, I got to come across there. How do I email, how do I execute an email marketing strategy to sell my course? All right, let's run the play. Let's, let's go to it. Let's, let's draw up the play. Let's draw up the play. So we're just going to write email marketing. Email marketing. And this is two, right? Sale. Email marketing to sell. Now, here's what we got to answer, fam. Can y'all see this? I think you can. Yeah, you're good. Email marketing to sell. All email, this is, I'm loving this episode. All email marketing is not created equally. You think that every day telling somebody, here's how your email sound. Hi, whatever the person's name is. I've opened up only five slots for my new such and such and such course or program. So you got some level of scarcity, but you can't make me just, <laughs> okay, I got to look directly at the camera. You can't make me think I'm missing out on something I never wanted. <laughs> scarcity don't work if you ain't convinced me that I should actually have the thing. <laughs> so I, only five slots left. Well, I don't want none of the slots. Um, best of luck to you. Be blessed in Jesus name. <laughs> You can't, make, you can't use scarcity until you get me to desire the thing that you want. So bad email marketing is when you start with scarcity without creating or channeling or directing desire. Desire has to be present. This right here is a social media post. So y'all going to see this on the, on the internet. You, you, cannot get, you cannot use scarcity in your email marketing, your social media marketing, even your sales page or ads unless you have or targeting people who already have a desire for the thing that you want. If there is Beyonce concert tickets, you can use scarcity because people want it. But if you're introducing a new course, a new program, and people are unaware of it, bro, there is no scarcity where there is no great desire and no great demand. <laughs> so you've got the wrong marketing strategy for the thing you're selling. This right here. Okay, I'm back right here. So when we start talking about email marketing, we've got a first. And of course, y'all know it's more to this when I talked about Marketing strategy, email marketing. I'm, this is broad view. You know your boy do this monetization and marketing, right? So broad view. There's about eight different types of emails I teach uh, in terms of what, like whether you're talking about Russell Brunson refers to one as a soap opera sequence. I've got a few different ones where one I call you had me at hello, where in the introduction of your first engagement when someone opts on your email list, meaning they've already opted in, it's the, the first email has to have so much value that is about the customer that they look forward to hearing from you again. That's you had me at hello. So whether it is you directing them to bonuses, incentives, things that you've already created, inviting them to a free event, something that is not front facing. So let's just say I've got a mentorship call that happens every Monday. You had me at hello overwhelms them with free. You're like, hold on. Oh, I get all of this. People love cheat sheets. So if I say, in my first email, you had me a hello would be, hey, I know how I know how it is to be to, for someone to bombard your email every day asking you to buy something, do something, or click something. Here's what I've decided to do instead. I've placed a cheat sheet showing you exactly how you can use email marketing and social media. So I'm going to teach you how to do what I'm going to do. So every day, not only are you opening my emails, but you're learning how to use my same strategy to get people to open yours. That's you had me a hello. That email strategy is transparent, it's honest, and a person's like, okay, I don't mind opening your email, right? So there's several different types. But for selling a course, one of the best types of emails that I think you got to do early on, let's just say email one, you're going to have to force a level of segmentation. If you met somebody at an event, well, let's say you went to a networking event and there were 100 people. All 100 are not people you're going to follow up with, but you need a way to segment what were the top five or six people that you need to do lunch with next week? So your first email should, should be forcing an action to get segmentation as fast as possible. So I would do something like this. I would pose a question 
to get them to answer. Email marketing, let's say if your course is on buying your dream house. Hey, person name, blank, are you still interested in purchasing your dream home? I've created a blank, 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 blank that teaches you how to blank without having to do blank. If you want access to it, reply to this or click here. Their, their clicking of it should segment them to a specialized list based on the name of your course. You get it now. So now the only communication they get after that is information that's in your course because you're still going to take written form content from your course and turn it into emails. So every day they're hearing what they would, what they would hear in the video. Don't think of new stuff. Take a small paragraph. If your course says, if your course, if one of your courses deal with social media marketing, let's just say if, if my course deals with email marketing, I could take a small paragraph and say, as long as the internet has been around, you can't even have social media without email marketing. So I want to show you how to make email marketing a part of your strategy to make more money. That's an, e that's an email. But that same thing is also a video in my course. So I could take the introduction of my video and one point where I might have dealt with three of them in the course and turn it into email. Don't recreate the wheel. The best way to sell the course is to break it into pieces and use it in all forms of your marketing. Because don't nobody want to hear you market one thing and then they buy something and hear something totally different. All right, we've dealt with that. I, I think I broke that down. Did I, t did, did I give you the, did we, did we draw up the play? This is the marketing and monetization play. All right, question number three. Question number three. Um, <laughs> this is quite a bit. Ooh, I like this. How do I use storytelling in my marketing to make it more engaging and to drive more sales? I like that one. We, we got to take that one. How do I use storytelling? Now, this is really good. I don't know if I'm going to draw up the play on this one, but I'll just kick it to you. I might drop a little bit of it. Let's do this really quick so you have a visual. So number three, let's drop the play, the marketing monetization play on this. Number three, how do I use storytelling? Storytelling. Uh-oh, S-T-O-R. There we go. We had to sound that out. Hooked on fun. It's kind of worked for me. I missed too many classes and I failed. All right. Storytelling to sell more courses. I'm going to draw this up really quick so y'all can see it. Here's a framework that I like to use. We're just going to write low with an arrow up to high. Here's one. And then we do another one right here. High. With an arrow going down to low. Now I just got to pause and celebrate something real quick. You can, to the average person, I think the real hack moving forward in this new space is to actually be great at what you do. You can't fake what I'm teaching you right now. You either know it or you don't. <laughs> so this ain't no Google, nah, -uh. you got to have that thing in you. When it comes to marketing monetization, you have to know your stuff. So like don't nothing sell, like actually being good at what you do. All right, so here's that. When we talk about storytelling, this is what I want you to steal. When you're trying to infuse your story, your message, your pain, your problem, you, how you overcame something. One framework of storytelling that I use and teach is low to high. So this is one where it starts with low and this is two where it starts with high. Low to high is where you talk to them infusing the lowest point of your journey starting with no money, starting not knowing what to do, working a job you hated and want, so you start with the low point of your journey and the things that you learned to get there. So here's where you were when you started, first thing you did, second thing you did, third thing you did, fourth thing you did, and now where you are at the high point, right? So it becomes a process using your story. Now, high to low is a little different. This is where you start with the high point. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Marcus Barbrosia. I've been able to build a multiple seven-figure company where now we employ over 15 people. We have multiple companies, six coaches, being able to help over 1,000 people turn their mind into money. That's being able to package the information in their head or the services they provide with their hands to create online courses that helps other people do the thing that they do. Right? You hear that? That's the high point. But it wasn't always that way. I remember when I got started my journey having only $11.37, boom, wondering how could I take all the knowledge information that I have and be able to be a full-time entrepreneur, not just for the sake of being an entrepreneur, but because I know I wanted the freedom to be able to help more people. 
So the first thing I did was, see, we're moving up from low to high. You get it now. We started with high, went to low, and now we're going to first thing, second thing. Here's the biggest mistake I made that had me stuck right here, and you're going to take them all the way up to where you are now. That's how you use storytelling to sell your course. Run that play. All right? Now, here's what we're going to do. I told you top five, but I decided three is enough. You ain't even run the plays I gave you. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no need to drop no more plays. Those plays will be successful for you now. I'm going to be honest. Chat GPT can't do that. <laughs> it's not going to tell you about no low to high, high to low. It's just going to write something generic. And I want you to make sure that you do not let AI take over your story, your nuance, your skill. Can't nobody do it like you. AI don't have no fingerprint. You are one of one. So I want you to infuse all that you are. Use it as an accessory, right? Use it as a side, not the main course. You're the main course, fam. So I hope you've got extreme value out of this. I can't wait to hear from you. Tell me what you think about these top three questions. Should we do more episodes like this, grabbing the top questions that people are asking and send in your questions. You can email us info at Marcus Wild Rose, or you can shoot your boy a DM. My social media drug of choice is Instagram, <laughs> right? That's where I hang out now. I got a Facebook and YouTube, of course. So those two are my two social media drugs of choice. I hope that You've watched this video, so you're about to make a whole lot of money. If you need me, I'll be over here minding my online business until the next episode.